What's up everybody, this is Marnik Fan, the Brook, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about networking. Networking, you know the thing that some people love, some people hate, and some people are like me, like, yeah, I don't know what I have with networking, but I know it's important. I need to do it as a professional, as a business owner, because it's not just about what you know, it's who you know, and maybe even more important, who knows you. And what better way to do that than networking, online, offline. But in this video, I'm specifically gonna focus on the offline version, because it's the hardest for most people, including me. You just walk in, you know nobody, there's these awkward conversations, like what do you do for work? Business card, no business card, connect on LinkedIn. Some people are calling outside to their voicemail, just pretending to be busy. And everybody's like, what do I need to do with it? That's offline networking. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the five tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you wanna call it, that help me the most. Now, I'm not saying these are the all encompassing ones, but they're the ones that made my networking life way easier and downsized the fear and the awkwardness of walking into an event, a conference, and talking to people that I don't know about myself, about business business and such. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I hope it helps you. If you're like Marnik, you talked about these five, but I have the golden tip for making your networking life easier. And it is not in this video. Please share it in the comments. I really want to know because I can also learn a lot on this aspect of, of business. So I'm curious to hear from you. Let me know in the comments, what is your golden tip? But for me, these five made a whole lot of difference. So without further ado, let's dive right in and let's see how we can make our networking life easier. Let's go. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Now, before I dive in, I want to do a quick shout out to Lisa. Lisa from Practify. She's a client of mine that, that asked me to help her with her presentations, with her keynotes, and she's an expert in sales and networking. I'll put a link in the description to her company website. So if you ever need, need help in boosting your business, getting that sales done, getting that networking done, besides this video, contact her. And I'm, I'm a big believer of credit to who credit is due. And this is a credit to you because of the five tips, some of them I learned from her. So I'm not going to claim it, but I want to mention them because they made a huge difference on my personal networking life. So you just know, check her out. The link is in the description to her company website if you ever need help on sales and networking. That being said, number one, what is the number one networking that you start with? It's simple, but often not done. It's preparation. Preparation. And with preparation, I mean that once you go to a networking event, first you check, is this relevant for me? Because time is money, you can't be anywhere. So is this an event where actually people are present that can help me, help my business, that are good for my business? Doesn't always have to be clients, could be possible suppliers or people that open doors, but is this relevant? Because not every networking event is gonna be relevant for you. Now, once you chose an event, conference, networking event, wherever you're going, prepare yourself. And with preparation, and this is also what Lisa told me, don't just walk in with the intention, I'm gonna to talk to a lot of people because it will go over the place and a lot of events where you're gonna return from will be like, yeah, didn't really get something out of it. So prepare. And with your preparation, step number one is that you know who are the four or five people at that event that I actually wanna to talk to. Online with these event pages, with these lists, you can often see what companies, what people are actually gonna be there besides you. So you can really see who are the four or five people that I really want to talk to and do your preparation on them. Might sound freaky, but do your preparation. Like these are the four people I want to talk to. I'm going to go to the event and I'm going to look up as much as possible about these people. Why? Because the more you know, the easier it will be to start a conversation. To give you an example, once I heard this tip, like don't just go there, select your event and then select the people that you really want to see. And then I looked up what these people do are doing and you can see they made a video, they had a podcast, they had a recent article, something positive happens around their business, they maybe won an award. All those things will help you because once you come at the event and you see that person, it's really easy to connect. Not the awkward question like, what do you do for a living? Hi, I'm Marnik, blah, blah, blah. No, hey, super cool. I wanted to talk to you because I saw your podcast yesterday. I saw your video. I saw that you won an award. How cool is that? How did that happen? Immediately you'll have a conversation because people like to talk about themselves and it's a really positive thing. So they can talk about the podcast, the video, the award, the article, and immediately have a conversation. They feel good, you feel good, the conversation gets rolling and you immediately connect. So that sounds so simple, but including myself, 
Not a lot of people do that. We all just walk in and be like, business card, business card, business card, business card. You talk to a gazillion people that might not be relevant. You waste your time. And at the end, who did you actually talk to? This here, this is my event. 45 people. Who do I want to see? What is their life about, their business about? Is there something I could take out? Look these people up at the event, talk to them and start the conversation like that. Mind blowing. It really works. And it's so easy. You don't even have to be a big extroverted person. You just have to say, I saw your podcast, wanted to know something about it. Let's go. So that's the first one that really stuck with me and really, really works. The second one that really helped me is get in early. Once you've chosen your event, you've chosen the people that you want to talk to, you did your preparation, you looked up things about them, get in early. It's really, really tempting. Also for me, I also did that to go in late because people are already busy. And when you're not feeling comfortable at a network event, you can just blend into the crowd. But it's really hard to start conversations because everybody's already talking to each other and it's way more effort. It takes way more effort to get into a certain conversation. Definitely if you don't feel comfortable or you're a more introverted person. So if you get in early, people are still fresh they're open for conversation and it's easy to spot the four or five people that you want to talk to if they're already there and there's a lot of people that are standing alone at a table or just random that have the same awkwardness and the same like oh my god how do i start a conversation so when you get in early you get that fresh energy that open playing field and you can just ease right in so when the moment that the big crowd arrives you already have connections you're already in a certain conversation and it's way easier for other people to join you and that also for me i was always late i was always like i'm gonna blend into the crowd and then i started doing this one get in early and oh my god it's so much easier it's so much quiet definitely because you probably not think that but i'm a very introverted person uh, for me it was heaven it was more quiet more easy more relaxed to start off and i didn't have to worm my way into certain conversations so get in early and then a little add-on to the second tip of getting in early call it a, a tip 2.1 uh that also that also struck gold with me is go alone Go alone, come in early, but also come alone. I know it's really tempting also for me when I was still uh, working for a company, now I have my own company, but working for a company, we were walking as a team, you know, because it's nice and comfy. You can go with your colleagues, you're going with your, with your friends or your business partners, and you already have a conversation. And I also did that. And even if you come in early, you already have your little group, but the risk of coming with other people, definitely if you're not feeling comfortable networking is it gets too comfortable. And you stay in that little group and everybody noticed that this group is having fun and is your own group and maybe they get attracted to it and maybe they were going to join uh, the energy we're going to talk about later. But in the end, it will not force you to walk around and talk to the people that you actually wanted to talk to. So trigger yourself or challenge yourself to walk in alone, no matter how scary using the five tips I'm going to share in this video. But forcing yourself, tricking yourself to actually talk to people that you don't know or that you want to talk to and not stay in the comfort zone, the warm path of things you know that are your colleagues or your business partners. Now, not saying you, you could never go to an event without other people. It is fun. It's fun to go together. Definitely if there's also speakers or some things to do to experience that as a team. But to get better at networking, challenge yourself and, and, and walk in alone and get out of that comfort zone. The third one is and this this is this is science this is when i heard this it's yeah you're like mark you're excited about every point that you're saying but it is the third one is have a strategy on how to walk and make the eight when i was talking to lisa she told me make the eight and i was like what do you mean by making the eight and she said to me morning if you go to an event and you prep yourself for the four or five people you can't talk to anybody. You want these four or five people. You did it. Maybe some more, whatever. But you still want to be seen. You still want to let people know that Marnik was there. Because that will also help you with the networking. And she said, well, make, even though you're not talking, when you're walking around the room, try to make an eight or an infinity, infinity uh, sign. Make that eight. Why? Because if you make an eight when you're walking from conversation to conversation or you're just going to the bathroom or whatever, people will see you the whole room will have seen you if you make the eight and i did that at one recent event i made the eight besides the conversations and when i got home i'm not lying when i got home i got two linkedin 
messages from people saying, Hey Marnik, we didn't get a chance to talk at the event, but I saw you there. Super cool. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Maybe we should connect because I had a question for you or it would be cool if we got, we got some coffee. Just by making the eight. So even if you just do a couple of conversations, you want to go home early because you did your thing, make the eight and make sure that a lot of people see you. Who thinks of this stuff? But it actually works. I'm making eights on every single event I go to. So that's the third one. It's a really simple one. Never thought about it. World's already changing. And then the fourth one is, I'm a big believer of, is energy-wise. A lot of people don't like networking. So you walk in with a four or five out of ten when you walk in because you're like, oh, I don't want to do this, but I got to do it for my boss or because I think it's important for my business. Everybody's talking. I should networking. People are attracted by energy. And if you walk in with a four or five, no matter who you are, I can guarantee you it will be really hard to start a conversation. If you bring in traffic, if you bring in the grumpiness or your fear of networking, people will sniff that out and they will avoid you. I know a lot of people that walk in with a four and then get home and then people ask like, how was the networking event or how was the workshop? Yeah, wasn't really my kind of people. No, it was your kind of people, but you radiated that negative energy without you knowing subconsciously, without you willing, but you did it and people stayed away from you. Try it. Even in the beginning, if you have to fake it, it's not really faking, but I can imagine that you feel it like faking. Walk in with an eight or a nine or a 10, eager to network, go in, smile, give your best version, the version you would give me if you were entering for a job interview. Give me that version. And you walk in and you walk in early and you walk up to a person that's maybe standing alone or the person that you looked up in the beginning that you really wanted to talk about, talk to, walk in, start the conversation, radiate that positive energy. And it might sound fluffy mumbo jumbo, but I guarantee you people get attracted by that energy. And then last number five of the five tricks that make my networking life easier is cut off conversations. Be bold enough to in a respectful, kind way, cut off conversations. I'm from Belgium. I don't know where you're from when you're looking right now. I'm from Belgium. We are a very polite people. We rather stand with you for two hours, hating on the things that you're saying, like, oh my God, this man, whoa, what a nag. I don't care. But we won't walk away and we won't mention it. The biggest trick that we have in Belgium is I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, I might come back and then we sneak out to the bathroom, even if we don't have to go. And that's how we cut off conversations because we're too afraid, or most of us are too afraid to say, here's where the conversation ends. I'm going to talk to someone else, even if it's a positive conversation. I learned this from my Dutch colleagues back in the day when I was working for PepsiCo. I was working in the Dutch market. And as a Belgian, that was a whole revelation for me because I was talking to a person and one of my first networking events had a great conversation, great connection, exchange details. And at a certain point, point, that person says, really love talking to you, Marnik. Amazing. We should connect later on on LinkedIn. I think we can do something for each other. But now I'm going to continue networking and talk to some other people. He shook my hand and he walked out, which was super respectful and a very positive way of doing it. And he really loved the conversation. For me as a Belgian, it was like, whoa, oh my God. This man cut off the conversation. I now have to go talk to someone else. But then it hit me like if you put me in a room, the old me in a room, I would talk to one or two person and stand there for two hours and have not talked to my four or five people that I prepared. A Dutch person will walk in or most Dutch persons will walk in and they will have talked to everybody they needed to talk to because they keep the conversations short, interesting, and are not afraid to cut it off. So be, and definitely if you're not experienced in networking and you're still in that early phase, like me, awkward, afraid, this is a big ask to cut off a conversation, but it will save you so much time. There is no use going to a networking event, talking to someone that can do an absolutely nothing for you that is not interesting, that doesn't care about what you have to say and stick with that person for half an hour to an hour just because you're afraid to cut it off. No, cut off the conversation, be respectful, shake hands, you know, definitely if it's a positive conversation, say you're going to connect later on and go and you will see people will understand. Depending on the culture, they will be a bit surprised, but they will understand and it will save you so much time and give you so much more opportunity to talk to multiple people. Time is money and you want to connect with the right people if you're investing the time to go to that event.
So those were the five tips, tricks, hacks that changed my networking life. And like I said, I am not going to claim to be a networking guru. I have still so much to learn. That's why I'm eager through to read your comments with your another golden nuggets that you're going to share with me. But for me, these fives changed my life. I was scared. I was avoiding network events. Now, I'm not saying I'm still, I'm, I'm not saying I'm a big fan and I go to every single event. I pick out the ones that I want to go and I adapt these four things. And it's just easy cruising. Even though sometimes it's still awkward, I'm not going to claim that, but it's easy cruising. They really changed uh, my perspective on network and how to do it. Uh, definitely for offline. Online is easier. We'll probably make a video about that. But the offline ones where the real human connections are made, well, these really helped. So I hope they also help you. If you liked the video, like, subscribe. You know the drill. But for now, I was Morning Fan Brooke. You were awesome. Until next time. Bye bye. Are you listening? Damn. Uh.